Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. It's loud outside, and I'm trying really hard to not lose my shit. But today, we are going to be doing this strange thing which i guess we could do with all you guys if you guys want to do this a great poet someone who puts out a bunch of zines and digital chat books and stuff of her own she has her own um, sub stack and her own podcast and everything chasey delaney um, sent me a bunch of questions and we are going to talk about them today so that will be fun chasey It took me a while to find the questions again because you've changed your email address so many times that I kept looking for the wrong one. So, but I found it. I guess we will jump right into this and get into all that other fun shiznat with the the Butte Ugg plays. Okay. So I don't know how I'm going to necessarily do this, but I might just play these and see how it goes. So let's see here. So let's hear what Chasey has to say. Hello. First of all, I'm not wearing my glasses because I squeeze my nose too much and I sound very nasal. I've noticed already it's making not one ounce of difference. I have composed a few questions with a bit of inspiration of people like thinking that ultimate question that we all go through sometimes which is what should i do with my life i would like you to consider these questions if you may if you can if you wish in a more creative fashion to do with like instead of looking for meaning and purpose in your life like meaning and purpose in what it is you love like your writing or art in a creative way. So the introduction is, these questions are based loosely on what should I do with my creative life or a professional life if the art which you create, you want to sell. Like, for me, it's not there yet. It's not, It's that's not what I want to do with it, but I still have, these ultimate questions that that pester me and I wondered what your take on it would be. So I'll get on with the questions. Thank you. Huh, that was really interesting. So we're going to be talking, I guess, about how to find meaning in life, but actually figuring this out through the lens of creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this. I like this a lot. Let's see how this goes. Chasey's first question. Should I put my faith in mystical signs of destiny or should my sense of a right fit be based on logical, practical reasons? Hmm. Should I put my faith in mystical signs of destiny or should my sense of a right fit be based on logical, practical reasons? Okay, so, like, obviously logical and practical is going to be the best way to go. But there are some questions I have with the wording of the first part of this. First of all, you say mystical signs of destiny. So let's try to figure out what that means. Because somebody's destiny... I don't think necessarily falls under the category of mystical signs. Like, that could still be, like, based off of logical and practical reasons, like what your destiny is. Because what your destiny is, is just where you end up, you know, at, at the very, very, very end of the day. So, first off, the idea that you may think your destiny or your fate is something that is already like mystical means that in your head you already feel like it's far off and not something that you could easily grab onto so that kind of thinking right there we we need to fix that thinking right away okay your destiny is whatever you make it to be so there's nothing mystical 
about that. The other word here is faith. Faith is a weird word because... When we think of faith, we think of it as a religious experience, as a, like, what's the biblical definition? Faith is being certain of something you can't see or something like that and all this other stuff. The problem with this is, is that you have more faith that the guy making your burger at McDonald's didn't jerk off in it. Or like cough in it or blow his nose in it or wipe his ass with it like we as humans have way more faith in fast food than any person has in any kind of religion if you put as much faith into you going to mcdonald's as you do in your writing you would be the most famous writer in the world okay now having belief in yourself is something completely different. Between all of these things right here, I think if you just believe in yourself and do the work, you you have it. There is no mystical sign of anything. There is no even logical or practical reasons for anything. If you believe in your ability and do the work to not only create the product, but then also get the product on the marketplace, and then sell that product. That's all you need. Like all this other stuff, this is like mumbo jumbo stuff. Okay? Have as much faith as you do in McDonald's. Okay? And then just do the thing. So let's let's hit the next question now. What do I need to change in my situation? When do I need to change my situation? And when is it me that needs to change? How do I know the difference? Okay, how do I change my situation? When do I change my situation? Um, Like, are you the situation? And how do you know the difference? You just have to do the thing. You have to decide that now is the time to do this. So if you say to yourself, okay, right now, I'm a successful writer. And now I'm going to go do that. That's all you have to do. I understand that everybody is in their own shit you know like everyone's life is different and every problem we all deal with is completely legit to all of us individually okay but if i look at how you wrote the question out for me when should i accept my lot make peace with my ambition and stop stressing out when should I accept my lot? You should never accept your lot. You should always want more. You should always strive for more. You should always want more and drive yourself for more. Don't ever be stagnant. Stagnation leads to death. Okay. So don't ever do that. Um, make peace with your ambition. Um, like, why are, why do you not have peace with your ambition? If you want things, go get those things. And stop stressing out. None of us will ever stop stressing out. Even the people who are the most zen motherfuckers in the world. Situations arise where they stress out. It's how you deal with that at that point is what makes you a person or a better person or a more calm person. I can't remember the quote or even what it's about, or how to say it. But it's something along the lines of, it's not the event that makes you who you are, it's how you handle that event, or something, blah, blah, blah. So, do not accept your lot. Your ambition is your peace. So, go full force into that, and you're never going to stop stressing out. So, understand that, come to terms with that, And just figure out how to handle yourself better in stressful situations. Let's go to question number trace. When should I accept my lot, make peace with my ambition, and stop stressing out? Oh, that was the question I just answered. So hopefully one of these questions will be that question. When do I need to change my situation and when is it me that needs to change? Okay, so that was the question from before. 
I'm doing this all out of order now. Um, you need to change your situation when you feel like you need to change your situation. When you sit there and say, do I need to change my situation? That's when you need to change your situation. So you wouldn't think it unless it wasn't something that needed to be dealt with. And when is it me that needs to change? That's up to you. I don't understand why you think that it could be you when you're talking about changing your situation. The only thing you need to change, I guess, would be, I mean, I don't want to like tell you, like have like a therapy session with you right now, but you need to understand that you're good enough, you're worth it, and you deserve everything you desire. So go get those things. However that works, go get those things. And that goes for everyone listening to this. You're good enough. You deserve what you desire. So go fucking get that shit. Okay, let's see what question four is. Um, why do I feel guilty about thinking about this? Thinking about what should I do with my creative life? Why do I feel guilty about thinking about this? Why you feel guilty about this? This is so like the people in our lives. There are people... And I've talked about this a lot of times. There are people who love us and don't want to see us hurt and want to see us have the best life possible. The easiest way to have the best life possible is to do what everybody else does and just focus on a career, focus on a job, one that's stable, one that's going to pay you every week, one that's going that has like the ability for advancement the whole fucking thing. Um, and then there's other people in our lives who care about us and don't want to see us get rejected because they know rejection hurts. So they will try to talk us out of these things as well. Then there are the other types of people who are manipulative, narcissistic pieces of shit who do not want you to have any dreams, who do not want you to have anything <clears throat> in your head other, other than serving them and making them the priority in your life. If you are with somebody like that, that is not healthy. That is toxic as shit. And you can Google, like, what are the traits of narcissistic behavior um, and things of that nature and see if that is the person that you're with. And um, look up gaslighting, look up um, just, like, what is a toxic relationship and see if any of the people in your life do those things to you. And then at that point, you that should be able to answer your question as to why do you feel guilty for thinking about this? Because you yourself will never make yourself feel guilty for wanting to chase your dreams. Guilt only comes from outside influences. We never have guilt just because, you know, we have guilt because we are told things aren't right that we do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would look into for that. All right. So let's get into the next question here. Should I make money first to fund the dream? Should I make money first to fund my dream? Okay, so here's the thing. It depends on what your dream is. If your dream requires a lot of money, then yes, make money first to do the thing. If your dream does not require money, so like let's say you just wanted to write books, you can make ebooks, put them up on Amazon for free. You can make audiobooks and put them up on Substack or like Adam does, put them up on Bandcamp or like I do and put them up on YouTube for free. You can put your work on a blog or on Substack or anywhere or on Instagram for people to read for free. Okay. So it depends on what your dream is. What does your dream require? If it requires something that like you can actually like write out a list of exactly how much it's going to cost to do it, then yeah, like I would say, okay, if that is the amount that it would take for you to live your dream, then yeah, 
like figure out a way to make that kind of money. But if your dream is just writing and becoming successful, like it doesn't cost anything. Write and I mean you sent me an email, you recorded these questions. So I know you have at least the ability to do these things. And shit, like yeah, none none of this costs anything. You can do all of this. And if you do it in a way where you're actually generating income, then you can make money while you are making money to fund your dreams. And then on top of that, even like using MailChimp or MailerLite, you can start an email list for free, you know? And I think Substack, you could do a mailing list through. And I believe that's for free. So you have all of these avenues to do things for free, so do them, you know? (sighs) Let's see, what is the next question here? This is my favorite question, and one which applies to me mainly. So, how do I tell the difference between a curiosity and a passion? How do I tell the difference between a curiosity and a passion? Um, A curiosity is something that you think about and um, you just keep thinking about it. And it's just something in the back of your head that you think about. And it could be something you think about every day because you're not doing it. A passion is something that you have done and you have to keep doing. It just, it is like tearing your heart out to not do it and you have to keep doing it. Okay, so that is the difference there. Let's see, what is next? How do I weigh making myself a better person against external achievements? How do I weigh making myself a better person against external achievements? Um, This is, okay, I'm going to answer this in two ways. The selfish side of me is like, why the fuck do you want to be a better person? Just be content with who you are right now and do the fucking thing. And achievements will follow. Um, If you have external achievements in mind, you need to figure out what those are. Like, make a list of what achievements you want so you have something to strive for. If you have a list of ways to make yourself a better person or things you want to do that makes you think you will be a better person... Write those down too, because I bet you're a fine person and there's nothing wrong with you at all. But you feel like because you have this guilt that you need to work on being a better person as you do this thing. And I don't think that's a fucking thing. I think you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. All you, the only thing that's wrong with you is that you desire something that other people seem to be putting down in your life. So. Um, I I would be figuring that out. Don't be so fucking hard on yourself. Like, you're a fine person. Just continue to do the thing. And your external achievements will come. But again, write out what those are. Write out what success looks like for you and what achievements look like for you. that's, That's important. What should it feel like or what will it feel like when I get there? And how will I know? I am there. You know, like, there, there. (laughs) What will it feel like when I get there? Like, when I make it? How will I know that I've made it? Okay. Well, this right here, this kind of goes along with making a list of what success means to you. And when you hit that, that's when you made it. You made it to that level. Like, if you said, I want to just make 30 copies of a chapbook and send that out to 30 people who want it. They don't even have to give me money, okay? Just that there's 30 people who want my shit. If that is success and you do that, you are successful. Success is a totally relative term and it means different shit for everybody. If your thing is you want 100 people on your mailing list, you know, make that thing on your list. If it's you want to have enough money to pay your gas bill every month, do that. If it's I want to be able to pay all my bills, do that. If you want it to be I want to be able to pay my bills and still be like, I don't know, I want to make $5,000 a month. That's success for me. Write that down. 
and strive for that. Do the things you need to do to get there. Go, okay, how many books do I need to sell a month to make $5,000? And figure out what that number is. And then go, shit, I gotta sell that many books. Okay, how do I sell that many books? Well, I gotta market that many to this many people. Okay, so I need to send out an email blast once a week trying to get people to do that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to figure out what up here is, and it's a ladder, okay? So figure out what up here is, and then figure out what each step of that ladder is, and that's how you fucking climb a ladder to get to the thing you fucking want. You know what I'm saying? Chasey, thank you for those questions. I hope the answers were sufficient. If they weren't and you feel like you need to um, kind of dig like into some of these questions a little more, let me know what those are. Like we'll go over those again or in a different way or something like that. And again, if any of you want to do something like this where you send me 10 questions, okay, that would help you out, record yourself reading those questions or send me an email of the list of those questions, and I'll do an episode like this. This was fun and super easy to do, and I hope it was good for you as it was for me, or as good, whatever. You, you guys know what I'm saying. So let's get into those plugs. Hey, hey there. Um, that's a bright fucking light. I, I'm recording a podcast right now. But okay, so here we are. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'll get that in a minute. Let me just go over some of this stuff here. So I wanted to let you guys in on what I've been doing on the YouTubes as of late. Um, hopefully I won't repeat myself. Today and tomorrow, um, or well, whatever, because they'll both be out by the time you see this. I did a little series about... Um, writer's top mistakes if you fall into these categories so again run over to youtube to check these things out i did a costco jerky and nut haul that was fun um and i did a video um the key to success as a writer or an artist and that one i really like it's super short i did a vlog about putting together my last chat book some kind of nature in los angeles Filipino food, Korean food, Japanese food. Then I did this video called How to Write Poetry for Beginners because I had never done a video like that. Um, then I did a video called fucking Defending Ocean Vong. For fuck's sake, why do you people make me fucking do this? And then there was a video about Beware of Me, um, YouTube writing advice, warnings. So stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Um, I did a couple live streams. One was Etsy scam warnings, and that caused a bunch of shit because of some douchebags. And then um, we had a talk on Sunday about trigger warnings and words that are triggering and what we should do as writers about those things. And you guys had some great comments on that, and I appreciate that. And then there were some Anarchy Crew live streams that we had too um which were pretty awesome that's another thing too uh this friday which will be the ah oh shit let me open the fucking calendar fuck me um april 19th is the anarchy crew um writing zoom open mic kind of workshop thing that we do so if you are in the anarchy crew you are welcome to that and make sure i have your email address and i will send you the link It'll probably be around 5 o'clock on Friday, 5 o'clock Pacific time on Friday. So if you are in um, like the Thank You Crew, you need to bump up to Anarchy Crew to get in on that. And then um, if you're not in any crew, uh, make sure you click the Join button on YouTube to be able to jump in on that shit. And um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, mentorship is still available. Click uh, the join button on the YouTube and go to, uh, I can't remember what the fucking tier is called. Maybe it's just called mentorship. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but you'll be able to figure it out. And you could jump in on that. Run over to Etsy to pick up my newest chapbook, What the Fuck is Happening. Um, 17 poems, 32 pages. Over on my Etsy shop, plus all my other books that are for sale, and some have gone out of print. Again, you gotta get these while you can get them. 
And um, there are some other uh, digital chat books over on Amazon if you want to go look there for those, plus my fiction and other stuff like that as well. Motherfucking shout outs. Let's give a big thank you to all you motherfuckers over there on Patreon. Want to give a big thank you to, I think it's Brad. He's new. Um, Michael, Cedar, Harry, and Michael. Over in the thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, to Julia, to Nathan, and to Cedar, and also to, we got we got another new one in there, to Garage Productions. Thank you so much. And then um, for the big swinging dicks in the Anarchy crew, let's give a big thank you to Nate, to Minnie, to Shannon, to Tamara, to Adam. To JH, to Michael, to Lauren. Thank you guys so much. And then for the biggest of the thank yous, for the biggest swinging dong, I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin. You're awesome. Thank you. Again, you do the thing, you end up in the back of the book, you end up at the thing at the end of the video, and all that fun shit. So jump on that. And if you haven't done it yet, go over and get my free ebook at IHateMattWall.com. And if you guys have read any of my books, um, someone brought up the other day uh, that I need to start telling people to go to Amazon and leave reviews on my books. So if you've read any of my books that are up on Amazon, definitely leave a review if you haven't done it yet. Um, it's... It's not as helpful as it used to be, but it's still really helpful, and it helps at least people buying stuff to find out if it's something's going to be good or not. So um, it would help me out a lot if you left a review on any of the books over there that you read. And then also, wherever you listen to this podcast, leave a review. I greatly would appreciate it. Okay? So, with all of that said, join the crew... Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.